So, in the early 2000s, competitive melee redefined what Smash Bros could be in a tournament setting. Ambitious players discovered dozens of techniques to get an edge on their opponents, and many of these have carried on through subsequent Smash titles. The jump from melee to brawl, however, made some of melee's most essential techniques impossible. Thanks to the changes introduced in Smash Ultimate, we have the resurgence of a technique that's been mostly impossible since melee, dash dancing. If you're excited to learn more about dash dancing, you may also be interested in all of the great content Pro Guys has to offer, such as on-demand coaching through our InstaPro platform and our Pro Pass feature, which includes additional daily competitive content and free passes for coaching through InstaPro. On with the video. Now, dash dancing in Ultimate isn't exactly like in Melee. Alright, in Smash Ultimate, you can string a sequence of quick fox trucks together in order to dash back and forth, simulating the effect of dash dancing. Okay, so what's a foxtrot? You probably asked that, right? A foxtrot is just a quick dash in one direction, right? Done by briefly flicking the left stick as desired. This period of running, known as initial dash, can be acted out with another dash after a short time. Every character's dash dance feels a little different, so you should practice, you know, dancing back and forth with your own character to get the timing down. If you see your character skidding, you either held forward for too long or flicked backwards too early. Alright, so now that you know about dash dancing and how it is you do it, let's go over its uses, okay? Dash dancing is a means of achieving control and deception in your movement. By stringing together multiple fox trucks, you can rapidly adjust your position and direction. So, doing this allows you to navigate the ground in any way you desire. You can dash away from an attack and dash dance back in time to punish it, and you can quickly respond to a changing situation and get where you need to be. When it comes to deception, Smash is very similar to language. Both players are constantly feeding each other information, right? <laughs> With awareness of how the opponent might respond and how to take advantage of this response. One of the most basic pieces of information that Smash players communicate is position. With the control of movement granted by dash dancing, you can attempt to bait and pressure your opponent by changing your position. Looking closer, dashing towards your opponent pressures them to prepare for anything you might do, as they can't react in this range. If successfully baited, your opponent will choose a reaction to fend off your suggested approach, and this happens just as you dash dance back. Now, your opponent is wide open after whiffing their option, right? And you could dash dance right back in with a punish of your choice. Looking from the opposite perspective, if your opponent is approaching you and you fear they may commit to an option, hey, this is a great opportunity to dash dance back. If your opponent commits to their approach, your dash back likely dodge their play, and you can now dash dance back in for the punish. Since both of these opposing examples involve dash dancing away from the opponent when danger is near, there will be lots of stalemate interactions when both players are dash dancing. So this adds to the depth of the rock, paper, scissors style mind games, okay? Creating a game of chicken where it's unknown who's gonna commit first. To summarize these uses for dash dancing, okay, you don't want to make the same mistake as many new players who just dash back and forth for no reason. Dash dancing in neutral lets you stay near your opponent but just outside their range so you can reactively whip punish. The effects of positional control and deception are not limited to the neutral game. When your opponent is above you, in the air, or off stage, your position is a strong influence on their next course of action. When your opponent is landing, hey, they're going to want to avoid being directly above you, so dashing underneath them will likely force a response. Likewise, when your opponent is recovering or getting off the ledge, they may be tempted to hit you where you're standing. So, in either case, you maintain the option to just dash dance back at any time in hopes that your opponent once again whips a move and leaves themselves open. You can also do the opposite by intentionally dashing away to give your opponent space when they feel cornered. Then, when your opponent moves in to take that space, you can dash dance back towards them to catch them off guard. Regardless of the scenario, dash dancing keeps your opponent on their toes. It makes your constantly changing position difficult to react to, and it allows you to enter and exit the opponent's space as you desire, all while you hunt down an opening to whip punish. While you get ready to dash dance circles around your opponents, let us know what techniques we should cover next. And be sure to subscribe here to the Pro Guys channel and turn on those notifications so you never miss out on videos that are coming out daily. Hey guys, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen, and connect with me on my Instagram. I love to hear from you.